Okay, so now I'm going to have a go at the final lesson in Codility. It's called Minimum Absolute Sum. Uh, let's get straight into this. So for given array A of n integers and a sequence S of n integers from the set minus 1, comma 1, we define value A, S as follows. Uh, value A, S is sum of A, I times S times I for I equals 0 to n minus 1. Assume that the sum of zero elements equals zero. For a given array, we were looking for such a sequence S that minimizes value A, S. Write a function that given an array A of n integers computes the minimum value of val A, S for all possible values of val A, S for all possible sequences S of n integers from the set minus 1 and 1. Okay, uh, I'm not really following this, but let's see the example. For example, given the array 1, 5, 2, minus 2, your function should return 0, since for s minus 1, 1, minus 1, 1, val a s is 0, which is a minimum possible value. Write an efficient algorithm for the following assumptions. n is an integer within the range of 0 and 20,000 and each element of array A is an integer within the range of minus 100 and 100. Now I don't mind telling you that this one is uh, very difficult and I can't really do it myself so I've looked at some help from uh, Peng Chao which is published by Codility itself and that explains how to do it in two steps. Uh, first a slow solution which I could have done well I did do something like the slow solution myself first uh, but to get 100% you need this golden solution here and uh, I'm just going to go through each of these and explain how they work okay so first I'm going to prepare the class Okay, so uh, just to make sure we know what we're doing, uh, what we have to do is find an array S with minus ones and ones, and we take the array A and we multiply the A at the index with the S at the index, and what we're trying to do is find the minimum sum. So in this case, S is minus one times one, one times five, minus one times two, and one times minus two. So that gives us minus one plus five is four. Minus one times two is minus two. So that's four, three, two. And one times minus two is minus two. So that gets us two, one, zero down to zero. So the minimum absolute sum is zero. So the way we want to do this really, uh, we don't have to be, um, we don't have to worry about this array. All we want to do is, because we can take either the positive or the negative value of each value, uh, all we have to worry about is the absolute values of these. And we need to balance out so that half of the values is as close as possible to the other half the values so let's have a look at how we're going to do that okay we're given the example 1 5 minus 2 and 2 okay but the first thing I'm going to do is convert them I'm going to forget about whether they're negative or positive because the s array can just flip them the other way so they can be um, we can take either a negative or positive value of each one so we end up with the values 1, 5, 2, 2. I'm going to find the total of these four by adding them together. So the sum of these values sum is 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then I'm going to make an array 
um, up to a range of half the sum. So we'll have five, but the array I'm going to represent the value that I'm representing in the array is going to be the index of the array. Uh, no, six values there. So this is zero, this is one, this is two, three, four, and five. <clears throat> That's not quite drawn right, but you get the idea. And I'm going to put a one in this value. Now what I want to do, because the sum is 10, I really want the minimum absolute difference between the two sets to be um, zero. So I really want to be able to put a one here. What I'm going to do is start at the one. I'm going to look at the first value one and I'm going to loop through the array. And every time I see a one, I'm going to move one on from it. So one goes there. Then I'm going to look at five. Now I can go from there. One, two, three, four, five to there. And from there, one, two, three, four, five is going to spill over. Then two, I can go from there, two, there, two. And the final two, I can go from any of these two. Uh, really, I can just fill every box. But the point is, I've got a value there. Now, when I've finished, I'm going to take the loop through this array from the right side, moving over to the left, and find the index of the final one that I've placed. And that is going to be the important answer that we get. From there, how far that away is from the center uh, the, the, so there's the sum the center is five however far that is away from the center it is at the center um, that the answer is going to be that multiplied by two so if um, if we for example couldn't get that one and we had four then the answer would be two because we'd have two values in the middle so let's have a go at doing that. So the first thing I'm going to do is calculate some the sum of the set. So I'll start off with sum equals zero, and then I'll loop through every integer in the set. Um, the absolute value of it is math.abs a, and the sum. We'll add up all the absolute values, so we'll end up with a total of 10. Now the center value is going to be the sum divided by 2. Uh, that's a float because it could be 0.5 if this was an odd number. So example, if this added up to 9, the center would be 4.5. Uh, the range that we want to go up to in our array is going to be the floor of that. So if this added up to nine, uh, the, we we'd, we couldn't get to zero. Uh, the most we could get to would be one, four on one side and five on the other. Uh, so this would be 4.5, this would be f uh, four, and the latest position in our array that we could hope to get to would be four. And so the best result would be uh, four and a half minus four times two. Now I'm going to make that array. I'm going to call it R for the result array. I'm going to make the size of it range plus one. Um, the plus one is because the first value in the array is going to represent zero and we're going to put a marker at position zero now for each value i'm going to start off at the end of the array and move to the end so 
thing is so I don't hit the values twice I'm going to start off here and so if I just go back to the beginning for the one I'm going to start off here and say if I've got a one there put a one there and then I'm going to go to this cell if I have a one there put a one there and this cell and finally when I get to this cell I've got a one there so I'll put one there and for the five start there if I have one there put it there obviously I'm out of range then then for the two and the reason for this is that so that I don't count the digit that I've just put in if I moved forward then for example when I get to two I would put a two there and then as I continue to loop through I'd see this again and count it again but if I start from the back I won't be using the value in the in the iterations that follow so uh, first I need to loop through each value of a and then for each position in the array if the index we're at minus the absolute value of a is is within range so it's greater than or equal to zero and if r so if we have the value at i minus the absolute value of a is marked so i'm saying if we've got the one in our array then the value at this position should equal one so what i'm doing there it's not clear for each value in a so looping through these and I'm looping from the back of the array and I'm saying if the value so in the case of one I'm saying if one back from this value is one then put the one there so that's that process in there now I need to loop from the end of the array going back to find the latest value that we've marked so I'm going to say i equals range i is greater than is equal to zero i minus minus so the index of the array and if r at i is marked then the answer is center minus i times two uh, otherwise i think i'll always have an answer but otherwise return minus one okay now i know that this is going to pass on accuracy but not for efficiency um i was on it that's on i is greater than equal to zero I minus minus. Right, so I'm going to run that through and we'll see how it does. I know it's not going to get 100%, and this is actually the best that I could do. and 63 percent so we've got the correct answer the correctness test everything works but we're timing out so let's see how we can improve that so the way we're going to do it this time is we're going to put a zero in the first position and we're going to put minus ones into all of the other positions And then we're going to count the digits that we've got. So we've got one digit one. So we have one digit one, one digit five. Uh, obviously, we're ignoring the minus. We've got two twos. Now, because the range of this is only from zero to 100, uh, we 
can only have a maximum of 100 sets so that's quite restrictive so uh, that's why this technique is going to work and be efficient okay what we're going to do is we go through so when we do one times one we're going to set position zero to be the count of the number that we're looking at so we have one here and we're going to loop through and we're going to say if we see a value which isn't minus one then we can get there with the previous number so we'll set the number to be the count if we see a number which is minus one then we'll look the number that we're looking at the one back and if we see a one there then we'll set this to that minus minus one so in other words we can get there with and we still have one lot of one remaining but when we get there we now have zero lots of one remaining and now we'll look at the one times five we put the one there then we go here at here we could get here with one so i'm going to put the one there as well this one and i'm going to carry on when i see a minus one i'm going to see if i can go five back i can't i can't go five back there can't go five back there here i can go five back and i can see a one i'm going to set that to be a zero one minus one so in other words what i'm saying is i've got one five at this position i can get to there and i now have zero fives left right the next one i've got two lots of two so i'm going to put two in position zero so in other words i can get to position zero i don't have to do anything to get to position zero but at position zero i have two lots of two then i'm going to see a value greater than or equal to zero and put a two in there then here i'm going to look two back and then go two minus one which equals just one so i put the one there here i do the same thing i'm going to look back two i've got two lots of two there so here with a move of two i can get there with one i'm going to look here look back i can get there with and i still have one lot of two left so the answer here is going to be zero and here i got to here with the five uh, just for completeness because that's already greater than or equal to zero i'll put the two in there now at the end i just need to go to the end of the array like i did before looking for the first value which isn't minus one meaning we couldn't get there uh, I get there straight away with the two and I do the same thing as before and return the um, sum divided by two minus that times two. Okay, so let's now modify this to do uh, what I just explained. So the first thing I, I need to do is I need to calculate the sum, uh, but at I also need to take account of each of the values we see so I'm going to make a map file counts and I'll make that a hash map for each value in A I take the absolute value I add the sum and then I'm going to say if file counts contains the value, the absolute value of A, then I'm going to add one onto it. So file counts put, file counts get plus one. So put's going to overwrite the value. So if we counted one, we'll add one onto it and put it back in otherwise 
I'm just going to put bar counts, put abs A, and our first count. So that is going to make our vowel counts array. Um, so we, we in our simple example, we've got one one, uh, two twos, and one five. I'm going to calculate the center and the range as before. I'm going to initialize R and put one into the start position of R. Well, pack zero into the start position of R. And then for all the other values of R, so for index one, to R length, I'm going to put minus one. Now instead of looping through the array, I'm going to loop through our bar counts. So for each value in the key set of bar counts. So those in our example is one, five, and two. I'm going to set R zero to be count of so count of A is bar counts get A. I'm going to set position zero of the array to be count of A. Now here's our loop for int i is zero, so I'm looping from the start to the end. And I'm going to say if r at i is greater than or equal to zero, in other words, if we could have got to this position with a previous number, then r i equals count of a. In other words, we can get to that position now and we still have count of A number of A's left. If we can't get to that position, then if I minus A is greater than or equal to zero, in other words, looking back at the array, uh, if we don't go out of range, then R at I equals R at I minus A minus one. So we can now get to this position at that position minus um, one. And that's how many of count of A that we have remaining at this position. Uh, if it goes negative, then we couldn't get there. And finally, uh, we go through our value from the from through our array from the end again. We work through, but this time we say if r is greater than zero, then we could get there. And we want to return the same as we did before. So that's our new version. Let's just check to see it comes up with the value of zero. Ah, uh, what have I done wrong? Ah, I've done that wrong. That should be one five two minus two. Yeah. Okay, let's just debug through it so I can explain again. So vowel counts, we've got one lot of one, two lots of twos, and one lot of five. Our center is five and our range is five. So our array is going to be six long, six values there. We're going to put a zero in the start and a minus one in all other values. Then we're going to loop through our array. We're going to think about the value one. We have one lot of one. So we're going to put that at R zero, one. And then we're going to move through our array and if at this index is greater than or equal to zero we're going to set it to to the count of a so that's not doing anything there but there's the one 
then we're going to look at position index one which is position two but it represents one uh, it's the value is currently minus one so we're not going to do this but if a min if the index minus a in other words if the value minus one because a is one is a value then we're going to set it to that value minus one so we're going to set it to zero so in other words we can get to this position and we still have one one left we use that one we can get to that position and now we have no ones left now we're going to carry on we're going to see minus one again and we're going to keep setting get to that and we have minus one one left I think we'll keep going through and we'll set the array to minus two minus three and finally minus four these are the positive values so these are the places that we could get to we're going to look at the next a that's two so we're going to put two at the start uh, we've got two lots of two Okay, so the first position is greater than or equal to zero, so we set it to two. That's still just a start. Position index one, that is currently greater than or equal to zero because we could get there with a one. So we're going to set that to count of two. So what we're saying there, we got there with the one, so we can get there, we still have two twos left. The next position is we haven't got there yet but we can go two back and subtract one from it so we can get here and we now have one two left so there's that one two we can also this is negative so we're going to do the same again looking at that one we can get to here with one two left so there's that now we can get to here with one uh, with zero twos left and we'll get to there with zero twos left now we could be more efficient now and say that we've got to the end with um, and the last value isn't minus one so we don't have to do anything more but we can we will just carry on how many fives have we got we've got one five so r zero equals one lot five now we'll look there, but we can't go five back, so we're gonna. Ah, actually, we're gonna go through, we're gonna keep seeing values greater than or equal to zero. We're just gonna set these all to one because we can get to each of these positions and we still have one five left. So that val, uh, that array is filled with ones. Now we're going to loop from the end of the array, stepping in, as soon as we see a value greater than or equal to 1, index 5, then the answer is 5, minus 5, which is 0, times 2, and that's our answer. So let's submit that. I think that was definitely the uh, most difficult codility lesson and it came at the end so that's not surprising uh, I just need to import the map and hash map and submit that Seventy two per cent wrong answer. Okay, I just missed a greater than or equal to zero there. Um, the valid results are greater than or equal to zero, not greater than zero. So I just need to submit that again.
and 100%. So that's a solution to minimum absolute sum in codility, the final codility lesson there. If you haven't seen, I've been through every codility lesson now and got 100% on each of them. Some of them I did it, well, most of them I did it first time. Some of them it took a few attempts, uh, but I've finished the codility lessons. So if you want to see any of the other videos, uh, there should be a link at the end of this video where you can go and see those. Um, if you have any suggestions, any better suggestions of how this could be done, I'd be interested to know. And uh, if you like the video, then give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching.